John Corzine's testimony to the House Committee about the collapse of MF Global has just been posted by the committee. We are going through the headlines. Among them, John Corzine testifying or prepared to testify about the risks he undertook in sovereign debt and the transactions called repos to maturity. He also talks about the leverage MF Global undertook. But most importantly, John Corzine has agreed to answer questions posed by the committee or at least deliver a prepared testimony. He is not invoking his constitutional right not to answer questions, the Fifth Amendment. My colleague in Washington, Sheila Damarajan, has also been going through it. So, Sheila, share with us some of the other findings, uh, or at least the other things, let's say, that you found in this document. Hey, Elizabeth. Yeah, Eric, and we have a copy of the 21-page document right here in front of us. First of all, John Corzine comes out of the block expressing his remorse about the situation. He says, I appear at today's hearing with great sadness. Their plight weighs on my mind every day. Now, he does say he uh, did voluntarily agree to testify in front of the committee in January. He had requested the meeting to be in January, so he would have the relevant time needed to go through all the documents, literally thousands of emails and thousands of pages of documents. So he does admit in this document he has not had the chance to do a full review of everything. In the statement, he goes on to give extensive uh, background in terms of where he comes from, his time at Goldman Sachs, also his time uh, in business school and also the Marine Corps. But getting into the specifics of the case, he does talk very specifically about MF Global's leverage. That, of course, is one of the key points in this case. Did the firm take on too many risky bets? Did it leverage itself too much? And is that why we saw the collapse? He does say that during his tenure that the leverage of MF Global did come down. In fact, when he came on board, MF Global's leverage was 37.3. He says that during his time, he actually brought that leverage ratio down to around 30 times. As you mentioned, he goes extensively through the technicalities of RTM. Now, this is repo to maturity. Now, this is a specific financing technique they use to finance those European sovereign bets, of course, which have been in the center of this case. Now, what's interesting is there is a very specific line in here that says, through these discussions, I became an advocate of push purchasing European sovereign debt using RTMs. Again, I became an advocate of purchasing European sovereign debt through these RTMs. So he is admitting that he is one of the people who did push the firm to take this new direction, to take principal bets using RTMs to finance uh, the bets here. Going on, he does say he, he accepts responsibility for the RTM trades that MF Global engaged in, so he is expecting some responsibility there. Also goes through a lot of his contact with uh, CFTC Chairman Gary Gensler. Of course, that has been one of the big boiling points in this case. Did Corzine's Wall Street past have an impact in how the firm was regulated. He says he had very limited interaction with Chairman Gensler throughout the time. Now, of course, the big question, the missing funds, he says, obviously on the forefront of everyone's mind, including mine, the various reports of customer accounts that have not been reconciled. He says he was stunned about it. He does not generally involve himself in the mechanics of clearing and settlement of trades. Eric will continue to grow through his statement. All right, Sheila, thanks very much for the update. That is the latest breaking news on John Corzine's prepared testimony to the House Agriculture Committee.